This year's Film Awards season is already shaping up to be an exciting and unpredictable race with less than two months to go before Oscar Sunday. This couldn't be more true for the Best Picture category, which is teasing some promising nominations that could coalesce into a very strong lineup. It's a task in some ways easy and other ways difficult. After all, how can anyone ever be expected to develop a definitive list of 10 films that best represent an entire year's worth of filmmaking achievements? There are certain films practically guaranteed at this point to receive a Best Picture nomination, while others have been teetering back and forth in the consciousness of voters and Academy members. But in the interest of covering as much of the awards race as we can, we're willing to give it our best shot. So let's kick things off with the frontrunners. The Fablemans. The 95th Academy Awards is going to be a ceremony worth looking forward to, if only because the Best Picture race is sure to promise a healthy mix of both independent critical favorites and some major blockbusters. Having said that, the clearest of the frontrunners at the moment has to be Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans. It has all of the ambition, precision, and passion that most major blockbusters wish they had, the kind of passion we all know Steven Spielberg is capable of bringing to each of his films. It certainly helps that there are few directors who remain as universally accessible and beloved as Spielberg. You do what your heart says you have to, because you don't owe anyone your life. Not even me. And with him finally telling his life story on film, The Fablemans represents the kind of full circle moment that Academy members, both newer and older, could easily and logically craft a narrative for. There are far too many elements currently working in the film's favor that it would be laughable for it not to receive a nomination. It has a director and screenwriter the Academy loves, at least three performances that play to voters' tastes, and its technical achievements, while maybe not quite as showy as the kind of films that normally dominate the below-the-line categories, are still likely to be recognized. Add everything up, and it seems likely that the film could receive upwards of 10 nominations. Everything, everywhere, all at once. While few films have been putting up a strong front to rival Spielberg, it seems like the Daniels' Everything Everywhere All at Once has the best chance of reclaiming its throne as the perceived frontrunner. A nomination is all well and good, but a win for this film would have the potential to be one of the most satisfying and deserved wins in the category's long history. It'd be an unconventional pick to be sure, especially considering that it's a film that refuses to be pigeonholed into a specific genre. In its exploration of the multiverse, the film combines the best of absurdist comedy, science fiction, fantasy, martial arts, and family drama in a moving ode to the immigrant experience. A win for everything everywhere all at once would mean the Academy giving some much-deserved recognition to a number of genres that have not always gotten their due in major categories. For that reason, its frenetic pacing, chaotic story, and goofy approach to heavy subject matter may not curry the most favor with more traditionally-minded voters, but we can be sure that it will remain in contention simply because you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who didn't at least like the film. Few films managed to capture the attention of filmgoers in 2022 the way this one did. It's a stunningly original film like no other, and in addition to a Best Picture nomination, it may have enough support to be nominated in as many categories as The Fablemans. Furthermore, it's in great shape to potentially take home awards for screenplay and supporting actor for Ki Hui Kwan, a winning combination that helped propel the likes of 12 Years a Slave, Moonlight, Green Book, and last year's Coda to Best Picture Glory. Top Gun Maverick As much as it makes sense, it's also kind of ironic that for being as prolific and ubiquitous as he is, producer Jerry Bruckheimer has never produced a Best Picture nominated film. Of course, he's always been more of a populist, the kind of producer geared towards films that have box office returns on their minds more so than critical attention. But while the expansion of the Best Picture ballot to a guaranteed 10 films has yet to fully take effect as far as the Academy recognizing worthy blockbuster spectacles goes, it seems like Top Gun Maverick will be laying the foundation very soon. In other words, this is exactly the kind of film that the expansion was always meant to favor. Paramount will also have Damien Chazelle's three-hour exercise in Bombast, Babylon, to consider for a Best Picture campaign, as both films fared very well in the Golden Globe nominations. But the recent Best Picture win for Top Gun Maverick from the National Board of Review may indicate that this is the film the studio should be devoting their attention to. 
Due to the high regard of its predecessor and its monstrous box office numbers, Top Gun Maverick may have the best chance of any of this year's nominees in appealing to older voters, who make up the largest demographic of the Academy. Maverick is simply the right movie at the right time. It's nothing if not a reminder of why the theater experience trumps all, and why not every Best Picture nominee needs to have a whole lot of subtext in order to be counted amongst the best. I saved your life! I saved your life! That's the whole point! What the hell were you even thinking? You told me not to think! Besides, it's too hard to resist watching Tom Cruise find new ways to cheat death. The Banshees of Inna Sharon Though Martin McDonough's three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri came up short on Oscar night, despite a heap of momentum heading into award season, the writer-director has since been able to ingratiate himself to the Academy, having previously won the award for Best Live Action Short Film for Six Shooter and receiving a Best Original Screenplay nomination for In Bruges. His latest film, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, has commanded attention across the festival circuit, and while it's not the most broadly popular of McDonough's films, which may hurt its overall chances of winning Best Picture, he's carving a direct path for himself back to the Oscars. Reuniting him with In Bruges stars Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, the film is looking to receive many of the same nominations as McDonough's previous film. Perhaps the most notable accomplishment, should the film be able to pull it off, would be four nominations in the acting categories alone, as Farrell and Carrie Condon are favorites for Best Actor and Supporting Actress respectively, while both Gleason and Barry Keoghan are strong contenders for Supporting Actor. Are you joking me? I mean, are you feckin' joking me? It has already achieved this feat with the Golden Globes, and while the question of whether or not McDonough himself can receive that elusive nomination for directing remains up in the air, the film itself is too much of a showcase for his actors and his screenplay's pitch-black mix of tragedy and comedy that a Best Picture nomination is certainly within reach. Mm, what's it called? The Banshees of Inish Erin, I was thinking. But there are no Banshees on Inish Erin. I know, I just like the double S-H sounds. Tar. As we already said, the Best Picture lineup would be nothing without the select few films that play better to the interests of critics rather than audiences. While maybe not the most accessible films of the bunch, they still offer plenty to dissect for those who are willing to give it a chance. Having already picked up quite a few awards from various critic circles, it's looking like Todd Field's Tar could be one of those films. But let's not take that distinction as an indication that it's any less deserving than the other films that will make it in. It's anchored by Field's strong direction and screenplay, not to mention Kate Blanchett's towering lead performance, which has solidified her as an early frontrunner for Best Actress. Its contention in three other above-the-line categories will likely form a decent resume for a Best Picture nod. It certainly wasn't lost on viewers of this past year's Oscars that none of the Best Actress nominees had headlined films in the Best Picture race. With such a deft handling of fragile and timely themes, not to mention a tremendous performance putting the capper on the film's emotional punch, Tar could easily steer the ship straight once more. You want to dance the mask, you must service the composer. You got to sublimate yourself, your ego, and yes, your identity. Women Talking Let's just go ahead and pretend that the lack of love given to this film by the Golden Globes never happened. Akin to Everything Everywhere's chances at Best Picture, Women Talking has been presented an easy path to Best Adapted Screenplay, while also putting forth not one, but two Best Supporting Actress contenders in Claire Foy and Jesse Buckley. That, as well as possible inclusions for Ben Wishaw for Best Supporting Actor and Sarah Polly for Best Director. The likelihood of its above-the-line contention is due to the nature of the film itself, as it promises exactly what its title offers. It hinges its success and timeliness almost exclusively on the performances of its ensemble cast, which will also make it a favorite for the Screen Actor Guild Awards as well. The film bravely confronts the hard-hitting and philosophical question of whether doing nothing, speaking up, or walking away is the best option in the face of oppression, and what role faith and free will play in providing the answer. We know that we've been attacked by men, not by ghosts or Satan, as we were led to believe for so long. We know that we've not imagined these attacks. While Polly's chances at winning Best Director may not be quite as strong as some of her opposition, the previous two winners were both women, which leaves little room to doubt that her impressive handling of the story will win the Academy's recognition. The Outliers the Best Actor Boost 
while the films with a greater shot at winning Best Picture often do so when firing on various cylinders that boost its awards package, every year there's at least one film that could largely care less about the top prize, instead throwing all of its eggs into a different basket with the unexpected benefit of stumbling into the race. Think Bohemian Rhapsody and Joker, both of which had campaigns that were centered primarily on the performances of its lead actor, while other nominations were very much superfluous and to an extent unearned. Controversy abounded when these films were released, and the same is true for Darren Aronofsky's The Whale and Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. However, the performances of Brendan Fraser and Austin Butler respectively, one touted as a career launcher and the other a career comeback, have won raves from so many different outlets that it's entirely possible either The Whale or Elvis crashes the Best Picture race on the strength of their highly speculated Best Actor nominations alone. Need to know that I have done one thing right with my life! Both films have been on the receiving end of some negative discussions, with Elvis garnering criticism for Tom Hanks' supporting performance and The Whale being proclaimed as dehumanizing and stigmatizing in its portrayal of obesity. It's that very controversy that has inhibited both films from being more of a lock than they are likely to ultimately be. However, what is perhaps important for the film's chances is that people are talking about them at all, especially since the consensus has largely been that Fraser and Butler both make the absolute most of their screen time. The Whale, in particular, may have a better chance than some people realize due to its strong contention in the supporting actress category for Hong Chao, and due to it being one of the only films likely to carve out as easy a path to adapted screenplay as women talking. Elvis, too, is slowly gaining momentum, having garnered three major Golden Globe nominations in addition to being named one of the American Film Institute's top 10 films of the year. Additionally, it should stay competitive in the races for editing and costume design as well. One way or the other, you have two films that have remained too central in the awards conversation to not at least be considered. Two blockbuster sequels? Top Gun Maverick has been something of a people's champion in the early stages of this year's award season, and while it's likely to maintain its grasp on that title, it's not out of the question for the film to find some possible challenges in the form of two other blockbuster sequels that are quietly but assuredly gaining momentum, Avatar The Way of Water and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Never have so many sequels been on the Academy's radar, but each of them have played a role in defining this year's narrative of bringing people back to the movie theater. It's more than likely that these three sequels will find themselves competing in the same artisan categories, with Maverick having strong chances in editing and sound, The Way of Water in cinematography and visual effects, and Wakanda Forever in makeup and costume design. However, each film may have a secret weapon to boost their odds if a few up-in-the-air nominations see the light of day, namely Tom Cruise for Best Actor, Cameron for Best Director, and Angela Bassett for Best Supporting Actress. The latter two nominations have already come true for the Golden Globes, and it's important to keep in mind that both The Way of Water and Wakanda Forever are following up two films that were more competitive in the Best Picture race than anyone was anticipating, while each going home with three technical wins of their own. And as long as we're talking blockbusters and sequels, it may be a little too early to count out two other popular contenders, RRR and Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. While many have criticized India's decision not to promote S.S. Rajamouli's historical action epic as its contender for Best International Feature as a gross miscalculation, it's been racking up nominations where it counts, earning Best International Film at the Saturn Awards and being named one of the National Board of Review's Top 10 Best Films of the Year. Glass Onion was included among the list as well, largely due to its own merits, but also the popularity of its predecessor. While it could have benefited from a longer stay in theaters than its limited release, Glass Onion is looking to be one of the biggest contenders this year for Netflix, who remain undeterred despite a Best Picture win consistently slipping through their fingers over the past few award seasons. It's garnered widespread critical acclaim and could have the support of adapted screenplay and supporting actress nominations to back it up. I want the truth. Can Pinocchio make history? Luckily, if Glass Onion can't quite get the job done, Netflix has a failsafe, and a mighty good one at that, in the form of Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. The current frontrunner and highly anticipated winner for Best Animated Feature, this stop-motion retelling by del Toro is being hailed as not only the best animated film of the year, but one of the best films of the year. With only three animated films ever earning a Best Picture nomination, this year's award season will be a litmus test for how well a studio other than Disney will be able to campaign an animated property. Luckily, 
The key to the film's success may very well be Del Toro himself, who has been an Academy darling ever since Pan's Labyrinth arrived on the scene with six nominations in 2006 and walked away with three wins. His endearing personality makes him the guy you'd want on your side if you're trying to promote what sounds like a hard sell. And then in certain shots, we use this small binocular. Conclusion So, to recap, the current frontrunner for Best Picture appears to be The Fablemans, followed by Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. The films that seem the best poised to complete the ballot are Elvis, Avatar The Way of Water, Glass Onion, and Pinocchio. Just outside the top 10, the films currently vying for a shot at a nomination are The Whale, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Babylon, and RRR. You also have films that have been making big splashes overseas, such as Park Chan Wook's Decision to Leave, After Sun, All Quiet on the Western Front, and Triangle of Sadness, which has been rightfully riding the high of its Palme d'Or win at the Cannes Film Festival. Of course, nothing is ever set in stone, especially since other factors like the Golden Globes, the Critics' Choice Awards, and the Screen Actors Guild Awards will surely play a role in determining the ultimate fate of the Oscar nominations. What do you think of our Best Picture predictions? Which films do you think we forgot to mention? Let us know in the comments down below.